Welcome back. It's The Advocate on PLUS TV, and of course, my name is Kemak Onyenuchea. My advocacy today, I have titled Scrambled Eggs for Dinner. I have always taken umbrage to this real perceived or imagined indifference of successive governments to the plight of the average Nigerian. I say real perceived or imagined because, as funny as it appears, there exists a certain demography of individuals, real or imagined, I cannot say for sure, who, despite the obvious cataclysm going on in our country, are hard at work, singing the praises of their puppet masters to high heavens. In recent times, with the continuous threats to not only our national unity, but also the uncertainty of security of lives and properties of all Nigerians together, it has become a worry of humongous proportions, living and breathing in Nigeria. The trends of kidnap, rape, armed banditry, murder, maiming and the like have become not just appalling, but I am increasingly worried sick that these hitherto clandestine activities have taken center stage in our everyday life. Things are falling apart and the center has long since disintegrated. I know it is commonplace to point accusing fingers at government and rest uneasy with the delusion that this is government's problem to solve. Unfortunately, this is not the case. There's a saying that a man whose house is on fire does not continue playing in the village square in hopes that his neighbors will help him put out the fire. A naked man also has no pockets into which he can put his hands. While not in any shape or form exonerating our government and leadership from their primary responsibility of protecting and preserving the lives and property of every law-abiding citizen, every day I ask myself the question, assuming that our political elites are the unseen hands aiding and abetting these crimes of unimaginable proportions, who are the foot soldiers, the boots on the ground that pull the actual trigger? Just a few days ago, my father sent me videos and pictures of the mayhem that happened in Imo State, southeastern Nigeria. I must tell you, up until this moment, I'm still battling to bring my mental health and sanity back to the zen and psychosocial equilibrium that I deliberately work to maintain in and for myself. In what can best be described as bizarre scenes, right off the pages of a most horrific fictional movie, I saw men and women taken from their cars and homes and slaughtered without a moment's thought or consideration for the sacredness of life and living. Young people like me, most even younger, wielding weapons of mass destruction and wreaking havoc, leaving in their wake a disgusting, bedazzling, of inexplicable description and proportion. Again, I ask, who are these people? Where are they from? Who raised them? From what communities, hamlets, and families do they come? What is their game plan? Are we going to just sit back and watch? Do we have leaders that we can hold accountable and who will listen to and respond to our plight? I recently read on Twitter that the average Nigerian deserves a medal for surviving in this country that we call our own. The question is, why should I have to be celebrated for living and breathing in my homeland? What we simply ask is for a sunny side, but it seems we are left to grapple with scrambled eggs. I make rush to say, something must be done. Certainly, something must be done. And I'll tell you who these boys are. They are the boys that you see on the street on your way here. Mm. They are the children that you see on the streets begging. Because at that age, when we do not unnest them, when we do not put them aright, they will yield to the power, to the cobbles right. that they give them. So every time I take my children to school, and I see these homeless children on the streets. I know that my children are in danger in the future. Mm. It's just simple common sense. So if we ask who are they, they are the boys that didn't go to school. They are the boys that didn't stay in school. They are the boys that don't have jobs. Bros, of course.
course, they are available for politicians to use as they will. Their yeah. lives don't amount to nothing. They are willing to die on the spot. Well, I, it's heartbreaking. I, I, I totally agree. Um, I, I love your advocacy. And um, some time ago, I put up a Facebook post that literally um, uh, that, was, that sits on the issues you've just raised. And in that post, I recall I made reference to what Awolowo once said, yeah. that the children of the poor you refuse to train, that when they grow up, they are not going to allow you to enjoy your we wealth. Sleep right. at night. So uh, what, we are what we are living with today is the fulfillment of the prophecy of um, Awolowo. You we all know that he was particular about education. Cool. And, and up until today, his legacy for Western Nigeria, how he was, how he was invested in educating the, that region. So what, as she has said, what we, have, what we are facing is the, um, the, the long-term effect mm. of what we've, our leaders failed to do 20, 30 years ago. Uh, in that post, I said that what we are facing now was always going to become. So it, was a, it, was a, it was a function of, of, oh, of, of when. Time. Right. Yes, yeah. yeah, not if. Because in the last 10, 20, 30 years, there have not been a deliberate government effort to invest in the younger people, in the mm. younger generation. Mm. So these people have all grown up. Of course, they don't have any skill. What do you expect? They become um, available hands for Pencils, criminalities and, the and all of that. To, you know, get, cause uh, exactly. Comfort was in Lagos, and I told her, Comfort, can you remember when I asked you? I hope Lagos is good to you. Yeah. Just because I know <laughs> that you see all these boys around, right? <laughs> Correct. And so it will. So it will go back to um, the question you know he asked and said, must he be celebrated? Um, for living in his own country. And I think, yes, you should um, roll with it. You should be celebrated. It has come home. That thing that you saw from afar off and saw it happening to other people is happening to people that you know, people around you. And, well, for lack of a better way to put it, God forbid, it comes to your doorstep. But you asked a second question. You said, are we just going to sit back and watch it sounds like a helpless question, but the truth is that as helpless as it sounds, it is the cogent question at this point. Mm. Are we going to sit back and watch? And if our answer is no, then what do we do? Because the same system is hammering us in, is holding us back, is holding us in. Um, they've already overrun us. You are right, Jeremy, when you said, when you look at them, you think of your own kids and the mm. fact that, you know, these are the people that they're going to have to meet. In fact, it's not just that these are the people they're going to meet. They are probably going to be the ones who are going to rule over exactly. our own children. Correct. Ah, wow. yes. Uh -huh. So that is where the, you know, the helplessness of the situation comes. Here you are training your own, trying to get them to imbibe what you would say are fair and just, you know, the right man manner of way to live. But there's this whole population that knows nothing, nothing absolutely about that. For comfort, what do we do? you know, I, I'm somehow, still ask a question. Honestly, I believe I don't know. that if we train more girls, if we go train more girls, mm. get all the girls on the streets, put them in school, strengthen the girls, because these girls will grow up to be mothers. Correct. Once they are mothers mm. and you've gone to school, their children will not litter the roads. True, because that is the how mother, we can actually tackle it from that level. have the greatest influence. You know, influence over children. Oh well, we keep going until we reach Eldorado. Hopefully, it's still the advocates. Comfort is next after the break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>